Right now we're going to talk about some practice positions and whether you're playing snare drum, drum set, or other percussion instruments, remember we're discussing basics here. We're going to be focusing on one pad or one area. So the coordination that you'll gain here in the practice positions that I'll show you will tremendously help you in all types of drumming. Now I recommend that you practice both sitting and standing. Typically for drum set type drumming you'd probably want to practice sitting a little bit more often and possibly tap your foot uh, not only with your drumming beats occasionally in time but also by themselves to get your ankles going a little bit. But we're not concerned with many drums right now, we're concerned mainly with getting an overall coordination with, with your, especially your wrists and your arms. Now typically for drum core type drumming you'll be standing a lot and what I do recommend if you're going to do a lot of practicing standing up as for drum core for example Get into a comfortable standing position and stay relaxed. On these two pictures here, I'd like you to note the angles of your stick for your stick positions relative to the drum pad, which you'll see in a few moments. Your stick should most definitely be less than 90 degrees and should, be, should look approximately like that relative to the way you see them when you're practicing. And your sticks relative to the pad at this angle should be about 30 or 45 degrees above the drum at this angle and I'll be showing you this in a moment on the drum pad. The drum pad should be about three or four inches below your waist okay, for a good natural striking position. Also your wrist should be up and out. Okay, Your wrist should be up and out. If you put a marble in that left hand, it'll roll out. It shouldn't stay there. In other words, that's too far over. That's too far over. Okay, this is too far in. This is too far out. Okay, just what we discussed before in those charts. This is the, a very efficient way of striking that drum pad or the drum. Okay, right in there. Wrists are up and out. Very important. Everything you do, if I show you the overall situation here. Everything you do will be in this position, especially for this instructional tape, will be in this position. Everything you strike will be right in there. Don't worry about the different drums if you're a drum set person, okay? Here we're worried about basics, or to get this coordination in this area. This will help you tremendously no matter what drumming instrument you play, okay? Right in there. So that's the natural position for that. So please remember, these basics are very important. Keep an eye on your wrist as you're practicing. One more thing to mention is let your arms hang freely by your sides. Okay, let them hang freely by your sides. If you're playing in this situation and your arm is stuck out too far, okay, if your arms are out too far, that's very unnatural. Your arms will tire. Now, not every person's exactly alike. If one person's arm is a little bit out like that and one person's arm is a little bit more in, that's okay. Little differences are okay, but you don't want any extremes. That's no good. That's no good. You don't want extremes. So here, again, is your playing position that you'll be doing. Right in there. And if you're playing just a solo, so to speak, you'll be in that position right there. Okay, you remember those charts. 30, 45 degrees, less than 90 in here, and so forth. Right now I'd like to talk about the three main rudiments of drumming and opening and closing. First, the three main rudiments of drumming consist of the single stroke roll, the long roll, and the flams. Now, they're extremely important and there'll be a lot of time and effort developed uh, and used for these first three rudiments. A lot of patience will be needed in this. The main reason why I'm always stressing these three rudiments is because everything you ever play will be made up, made up of those three rudiments. Anything you ever play in any percussion instrument is made up of the single roll, long roll, and flams. Now the single helps develop tremendous speed in the wrists and helps build good coordination. Now opening and closing is something that we're going to do for each and every rudiment that we'll go through, which we'll be starting in a few moments. Opening and closing is, means uh, simply this. You'll start a rudiment or a rhythm at a very slow speed. You'll gradually increase to as fast as you can without spoiling it and then gradually slow down to a stop speed again. Now opening and closing, as far as the format, the form for it will be like this. And we'll go through this in a few moments in detail. But your sticks will be as high as your eyes. They'll be about this far apart. And everything will be done in this striking position, as you saw in the position, uh, playing positions earlier. The big advantage for opening and closing is it helps build great overall coordination. 
at, at all different heights and speeds. It also helps you learn the rudiment easier. It stresses slowness and fastness. And it helps develop very good timing and accuracy. So you're learning the rudiment at all speeds and all different heights. It's a beautiful way uh, to learn all your sticking patterns and it just has a tremendous amount of advantages to it. Right now I'd like you to take a look at an open and closed chart. On this open and closed chart, it just stresses what I just discussed. You'll start your rudiment at a very slow speed, approximately 40 beats a minute, but at a very slow speed, gradually increase to a speed where you're as fast as you can without spoiling the rudiment. Then you'll gradually slow down again to that same slow speed that you began at. You, during your practice, should take a minute and a half to speed up as fast as you can and a minute and a half to slow down back to that slow speed again. So your total time for opening and closing is three minutes. Now during the demonstration of the rudiments that I'll be showing you, I will be doing the rudiments for approximately one minute, plus or minus a little bit, just for demonstration purposes. But for your practice time, your total time should be three minutes and you're welcome to use a clock, especially as you're first getting used to it. So please remember, a minute and a half in, a minute and a half out, three minutes total. For demonstration purposes, I will be much shorter than that.